कैन यू थिंक ऑफ एन ऐप विच एड लेट से इट वॉज हाईली अवेलेबल बट पुअर रिलायबिलिटी वॉज देअर Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So, when building large-scale systems, we often uh, hear about these terms like scalability, reliability, availability, maintainability, etc. Right? But what do they actually mean? And why are they so important in system design and building any large-scale system design? So, in this video, I'll break down these concepts with real and uh, real-world examples and help you understand the core of these terms and what we mean by this actually exactly, and understand with. modern life examples okay this is our uh, i think fourth or fifth video in the rgu system design playlist so we have already covered these three topics so keep an eye on this rgu system design playlist we will be covering all the basic system design concept in a structured well structured manner and the most easiest and least way possible i'll explain you will be able to understand all the concepts easily all right so keep an eye on this playlist so without further delay let's start so the first term that we have is the scalability so Imagine you run a small e-commerce platform where daily hundred or fifty users are coming and accessing your application. Suddenly, let's say after a viral marketing campaign or some someone a very popular celebrity promoted your application or website. So you, you, let's say suddenly you start getting one hundred million, one hundred thousand or one million users suddenly, right? In this case, can your system operate in the smooth manner as it used to do with hundred users? Possibly not. So. this is where the concept of scalability comes into picture so the term scalability means it defines the system's ability to handle growing amount of work efficiently without performance degradation that means here the amount of work is the number of users right if the number of users are huge the traffic is increasing in your application your application should perform as it is so if we discuss about the scalability type so there are basically two types of scalability that we usually do let's say these are my servers so one is the vertical scaling So in vertical scaling, we basically increase the server uh, resources like CPU, RAM, storage, etc. for that given server. Let's say we had a small server with let's say eight GB RAM or six core CPU, and we can then increase its the same machine's capacity, right? This machine's capacity itself will be increased to a higher version. Like we increase the RAM to let's say sixteen GB and CPU to sixteen uh, core and storage to let's say five one twelve GB SSD or something like that. So that is what vertical scaling means. I mean, you are increasing the capacity of the same machine, same machine that you are that on on which your application is running. So the next type is about the horizontal scale scaling. So I am not going to discuss in detail about these things, but that we will discuss when we will be uh, when I will be explaining about the scalability concepts. But right now, let's just understand in brief on a on a high level note. So with horizontal scaling, it's basically we add more machines in our uh, architecture. That means instead of running just one. instance of our application in one machine we add multiple instances multiple server instances like this and run our application to handle the user load when flipkart does its big billion day sale right they must be doing this kind of horizontal scaling and they they will be adding multiple servers in the background to handle more user load all right so this way we increase the capacity of our system to uh, cater to large number of users so the next term is about reliability so imagine you are just watching your favorite show in netflix or you are watching your favorite india versus pakistan world cup match in jio hotstar and suddenly the app crashes uh, just to make thing worse let's say you are doing some payment or doing some transaction and suddenly the bank app fails or bank servers fails in those cases we will say that the system was not reliable so by definition if you go by definition system reliability is a system's ability to function correctly even in even in presence of failures like even if one server or multiple servers fail still it should have some kind of mechanism in place to cater to the user request and serve the users for example netflix ensures reliability by using multiple data centers uh, centers worldwide that means they will be storing um, the data in multiple servers across the globe so even if one system fails the other servers take take their place to uh, cater to the user request okay so some of the techniques that we can employ to use reliability in our application is redundancy redundancy means we can have multiple backup server for that main server in this way using redundancy we can ensure reliability the second technique is to have replication replication is just like you know you are copying the data from uh, from one database to multiple servers multiple databases so that even if your one database node fails you still have other database node to serve the request so the next term that we have is the availability so have you you must have seen multiple websites right when you load the website it shows service unavailable or 503 temporarily unavailable or bad bad gateway 
those kind of issues happen so to some websites so that is an availability issue that means the service was not available the application or website was not available for you to serve and technically if you go by the definition again availability measures how often a system is operational accessible to users if you just give you one example google search that we use right it is 59 99.999 percentage of availability which it's also known as a five nines so this means that the google search is only down for few minutes in a year it's very rare so it ensures that the entire search engine the search system is available 99.999 percent time so it's very huge actually it's a very big deal to achieve that but still using some strategies you can achieve this the first one is to have a load balancer in place right what the load balancer will do it will distribute the incoming traffic let's say multiple users are accessing your application it will distribute the incoming traffic across multiple servers with the presence of multiple servers even if let's say some server failed other server will be able to cater to those requests so one technique is to use load balancers next technique is to use auto scaling auto scaling as in as the load grows the number of machines would automatically spin up let's say three servers were not enough the load increased the applications would automatically spin up multiple servers and work with them so this is known as auto scaling right i mean automatically the number of servers will increase and as the load reduces it will also downscale it, it will upscale it will downscale automatically both comes under the auto scaling so both upscale and downscale all right next technique we can use is the have cdns in place i mean when you will be discussing about cdns you will understand more about that cdns is basically having uh, copies of data across multiple geographical locations okay the same data so that the request user request can be served from the nearest available geographic locations server so that that's how we ensure availability of a system so even if one server failed or multiple server failed we have other options other servers available to cater to the user request so availability maintain reliability both kind of might be sounding similar but there is a little bit of thin line of difference okay you can understand that so the next term we have is about the maintainability so imagine you are a developer working on a complex system complex product you are working on you are working on a big code base and suddenly you push a small update and due to that update you released it to the production let's say even after testing it but in production it failed it let's say um, crashed your application entirely so it, it 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 is a nightmare for any developer okay or any technical manager so that's where the maintainability concept comes into picture so maintainability by definition is how easily a system can be updated fixed and modified without breaking existing functionality that's what maintainability means and uh, the cool example of maintainability is having a microservices architecture we'll again be discussing about microservice and monolithic in a future video but what microservice architecture does is which is popularly used with applications like netflix uber amazon flipkart everything having a microservice architecture will have let's say multiple services right let's a uh, single user request can be solved by multiple type of service multiple type categories of service like payment service order service notification service etc so let's say if you have to if you are to push some update to the payment service it won't affect the order service module or the notification service module so this is one way microservices architecture is one way of ensuring maintainability in your uh, entire application and entire system right the next technique you can employ is to have a modular code base like you can uh, the code that code that you write it should be modular enough like dividing the code into independent services then independent sub services and accordingly interacting with the things so that the code also becomes maintainable easily maintainable by the uh, developers then you can include like a automated testing framework right in your ci cd pipeline you can include the automated testing so so that you can catch issues before it is deployed or it is being released then the main thing is which we often don't put that much of importance is having a good documentation whenever you are writing code make sure you are writing proper inline documentation the variable names the functions you are using proper enums the function names should be self explanatory the parameter names the variable names everything should be self explanatory itself and you should keep the functions as small as possible in a modular manner if a function should do only one type of task and one task only at a time that's how you can ensure maintainability in our application it's not just about the uh, system architecture part like having a microservice architecture it 
mostly have a lot a lot to do with your code how you write good code clean code and quality code so that's what about the maintainability part so as we discussed scalability ensures we handle the increased load efficiently then reliability ensures the system works even if the some kind of failures happen then availability keeps the system up and running uh, with minimal downtime as less as possible downtime all right then maintainability ensures ensures that uh, updates or modification to existing application is smooth and seamless without breaking any existing functionality so now i'll give you a question okay so can you think of an app like till now whichever you have used uh, can you think of an app which had uh, let's say it was highly available but poor reliability was there now just understand uh, just think about the term and uh, analyze the terms availability and reliability and try to answer this question any application that you have used in the past which is highly available but had a poor reliability let's try to answer this question okay so let me know in the comments it will it will be fun to discuss it about that all right so if you found this video helpful um, don't forget to like the video and if you like my content please uh, consider sub subscribing to my channel we are targeting to, uh, targeting to reach 3500 subscribers by the end of this month so keep supporting if you have any questions about whatever we discussed in this video put them in the comment section i'll be sure to, uh, i'll be sure to answer them so thanks for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one thank you